The solution performed is made out of five projects. The first one contains flowchart workflow furniture implementation of all activities of the solution. After that, there is declarative sequential service furniture which displays the complete workflow which is saved in the file service one SAMLX. That is followed by WPF furniture which contains the application that initiates the workflow asking for the user's input data. Status control is a client application which could be located in any other department or PC. The workers use it to show when they completed their tasks. Finally, the WPF application designer is the designer of the workflow that allows creating and modifying new workflows in an efficient way. Next up is the explanation of the service one SAMLX file. This service has several operations in different levels. It's a sequential flow where the activities are done. The first operation to be done is make order, which receives the parameters inserted by the user, calculating the code or ID of the order and storing all the information in the database. This process is implemented as a web service. The following operation is to calculate the code boot, which is designed as a service published on the web server like the previous one. Subsequently, it queries the database to enable us to get a supplier. The election of the supplier is made randomly between the elements of the database to simulate a more complex process, such as pricing or availability. This service returns a list of suppliers, but in our case, it returns a list with only one element. With that list, the client application, the chosen supplier is shown to the user through the screen. The next step of the workflow is the sanding process which is based on a notification depending on the contract. In this case, the contract is called send notification and waits for the operator of the application status control to press the button that corresponds to the end process. Once that's done, the price of the button is received and an activity named send treatments is executed. That activity stores the information in the log table. It's worth mentioning that the endpoint of send message contains an URI with the port X2 X2 where the status control application will be listened. The following operations are called cut pieces and classify boot. They are exactly equal in terms of process. The only change is that the information stored is specific to its activity. Next is the turn of stain boot. The user must turn to the drying time and the turn of painting. The idea is similar to the previous processes. The only thing that changes is the contract of receive message, which in this case is get time, whose parameters are the times. With this data, the activity simulates the wait through sleep of the product both times. When those pass, the program inserts the information about the process implemented into the log table. Now is the turn of the evaluation activity. This activity simulates the phase of testing over a cabinet to determine its quality. This test has been simulated by a random between 0 and 1. Should the cabinet not pass the test, a 10% of discount on the price will be applied and stored in the log table afterwards. Whether the result is right or wrong, the testing of the product will be saved in the log table. The next action is called packing product, which simply saves in the log table that the cabinet has been packaged. Finally, a message is sent to the status control application through a new contract whose parameters are the code for the cabinet, the price and a test which in this case is always finished. The status control application collects and displays them in a table. This table will be updated each time the manufacturing process of the cabinet finishes. It's time to see how the program works. This requires Service 1 Samanex to be released in localhost port 65193. 
We introduce the data into the user window and we press the button to get the code of the order, order ID or code ID. Once that's done, the code board is calculated with the next button. Now we get the supplier. At this point, the second application comes into play. As shown in the top label, it's changed and the order ID appears. Each operator is supposed to press the finish button when they complete their task. If we press that button, the code above disappears and the program gets to the next task. This is repeated in the following tasks. Finally, the stand boot operator inserts both times and finishes the job, which is listed in the table information about the cabinet. The process can be made again introducing other data. When it finishes, the new data will be shown in the table next to the information that was already there. It's now turn to test the workflow designer with all the activities generated for the creation of furniture along with the generic, which can be seen in the toolbox on the left. As another functionality to this design, in the top menu you can see a menu that allows us to create safe and load workflows. Those are SAMLX files. We'll see how the SAMLX file loads. To check it works fine, the sun treatments activities should be eliminated, linking the separated parts. The new workflow can be executed now, noting that the passage of sand treatments is not stored in the database. The server must be relaunched again to get that done. Now it's running again. As seen in the first example, there is a row associated with a stand treatment activity that doesn't appear in the last one, which means that the changes that had been introduced have fulfilled its mission.